had to learn what my gift was. It wasn't singing. Our gifts are important. Paul's trying to explain that to the church in Corinth, and Paul is trying to explain that to us in the church today. Everyone in this room, every person seated in this room, everybody that'll see us on TV or the internet or however they might come to find the message from this morning has been given a gift by God that is intended to be in service for God. And we just got to figure out what those gifts are and how to use them. Most of you are learning by now that my wife Shannon works at Chick-fil-A in their corporate headquarters. And, and long before Shannon went to work there, I'd had the opportunity on several occasions to hear Truett Cathy speak. And if you've never heard Truett speak, it is such an incredible blessing. One of the great Atlantans that has built a company that is just amazing. And, uh, and, and how he's built that company is even more amazing. One of Truett's quotes that he'll say over and over and over again is that things don't have to be perfect to be effective. Now, I started with an illustration of, of something that really does need to be perfect. There's very little room for error in space flight. But even a space shuttle is not perfect. Even those that have gone into space and have come back safely are not perfect. They plan for things to happen in space flight that are beyond human control. So if you're sitting here this morning and you think, well, I'm not the best at that, that's okay, because very few of us are. Very few of us possess the gifts that have been given to those very few, but we've all been given a gift when used to the best of our abilities, regardless of if it's perfect, can do amazing things for God. Now, I've told you that I graduated from Georgia Tech. I started my life as an architecture major. I think I told you, I, I, I can't remember if it was on a Thursday or in here, that I stood up at the end of kindergarten and said I was going to be an architect, an artist, and a part-time singer. That's what I was going to do. Well, I, I got to Georgia Tech, and I figured out I couldn't draw, so that took out the first two. And I've already told you what happened when I've tried to sing. So here you are, a second-year student at Georgia Tech, and your entire life's dreams have gone out the window. And I had to sit down with my, my advisor at Georgia Tech. I don't even remember his name now. But he looked me in the eye and he said, young man, you're not cut out to be an architect. In fact, you're probably not cut out to be in college at all. I think you just need to leave and go find something else to do. He apparently had never read the Bible in those parts of encouragement and, and lifting people up. But you know what? He was right. Because several years before, God had begun to kindle within my heart a call to ministry. And despite the fact that my humanness wanted to be an architect, wanted to be able to create buildings, wanted to be able to draw beautiful pictures and create art, that wasn't what God had gifted me with. I'd been getting in trouble for talking since I was in kindergarten. <laughs> my voice was loud and obnoxious which in a classroom setting is not good, but in a church <laughs> works pretty well. I'd been fighting the very gift that God had given me all my life until I got over, hit over the head with a calculus book. And then suddenly it became clear. Am I the best preacher in the world? Probably not. We all think we are, but we're not. But God has given me a gift to preach and teach and to love on folks. And so that's what I've tried to do in those 15 or 20 years since. We've all been given a gift. We've all been given a gift that is to serve God, to be there for God. When we started this journey together a few weeks ago, we talked about the saints. We talked about that great cloud of witnesses that is all around us. They're cheering us on. They're standing along the sideline. They're looking forward to us using our gifts to do great things at 360 Peachtree Street. You'll remember that Ronald Reagan was one of the great speech writers and speech deliverers of any president we've ever known. Reagan had a, a, an innate ability to understand the heart of the country 
And so the evening of January 28th, 1986, instead of the previously scheduled State of the Union, he addressed the country, a country that was in mourning over the loss of, of this space shuttle crew. His entire speech is amazing, but I found it again this weekend as I was preparing for this sermon, and this paragraph jumped out at me. And I want to say something to the school children of America who are watching the live coverage of the shuttle's takeoff. I know that it is hard to understand, but sometimes painful things like this happen. It's a part of a process. It's all part of the process of exploration and discovery. It's all part of taking a chance and expanding our human horizons. The future does not belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the brave. The Challenger crew was pulling us into the future, and we will continue to follow them. As we've hit the ground running in Atlanta first, I believe that the saints in heaven, those that have gone on before us, are pulling us into the future. They're begging us to do what it is that God is calling us to do. They're begging us to find those gifts that God has given us and use them to the best of our ability. They are dragging us into the future. Now, we can go one or two ways. We can go kicking or screaming, and we can, you know, almost like a cartoon where they've dug in their heels, and you see the tracks in the ground. Or we can jump on and hold on tight and follow with our hearts, with our spirits, with our service, with our hands and our feet. Your gift is no small part of how we're going to move into the future. No gift in this place and beyond these walls is too small or too big. The serpent in the garden played no small part. The fruit that fell from the tree played no small part. Noah and his ark played no small part. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob played no small part. Joseph and Moses played no small part. Young David, his slingshot and a smooth round stone played no small part. A little babe in a manger played no small part. A little boy in the temple played no small part. 30 pieces of silver, an angry mob, three huge spikes one enormous stone, one God, one spirit, one gift. What's your gift? What's your part? To give anything less than your best is to sacrifice the gift. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our hymn this morning is hymn number 399, Take my life and let it be. As we sing this hymn this morning, we're thinking about what it is that God's calling us to do and who it is that God is calling us to be. Will you please stand with me now as we sing? Mm -hmm. 